What's up guys, today we're looking at Leak Code 105, Construct a Binary Tree from Pre-Order and In-Order Traversal. Problem statement is, given a pre-order and in-order traversal of a tree, construct a binary tree. And then the note says, you may assume that duplicates do not exist in the tree. So I'm gonna assume they put that in there for a reason, and we are gonna leverage that in our algorithm. So the example is, given the pre-order array, 3, 9, 20, 15, 7, and the in-order array, 9, 3, 15, 27, you would return the following binary tree. If we have the tree 1, 2, 3, pre-order means we print the node at the root first, then it's left, then it's right. In order means we print the left first, then the root is in or inside, and then the right. So we can also visualize here in this example tree, A is at the root and it has some left subtrees, which is recursive and some right subtrees, which is recursive. And these recursive subtrees are, or these nested subtrees are represented uh, as these blue and purple um, triangles here. So in pre-order, we print A, the root node, then all the stuff in the blue, and then all the stuff in the purple or pink. Uh, in order, we first print all the left subtrees or the blue triangle, then the node itself, which is A, and then all the, the right subtrees, which is represented in purple. So let's work through the following example tree in pre-order and in order. So pre-order means the root node comes pre its left and right subtrees. So first comes A, then we go to its left subtree. Okay, so this is a recursive call, meaning we start over and pre-order means first, this root node of the subtree comes first, so B, then we go to its left, so E. Okay, and then we backtrack, then we print B's right subtree, which is nothing. And then we backtrack up to A and then we print its right subtree, which is C. So it comes pre or before its left subtree which then gets printed as F. Let's contrast this with in-order traversal where each root node is in between its left and right subtree. So you can see here, A is in the middle, it's up at the top of the tree. So in-order means we're at this node and we first wanna print its left subtree. So we come down here, okay? And then we start over because it's a recursive call. So we're at B, B is at the root and we wanna first print its left subtree so we print e first so we keep going all the way down until we base case out and we print e first and then we backtrack and we print b which was our previous root node in the middle or after e okay and then a and then f and then c so each node is in between its left and right subtrees in this example they give us the pre-order and the in order how can we build the tree from this? Well, we know the first element in the pre-order array is gonna be the root of the tree. So we can start out and say the three is at the root. Okay, so we're considering the first element in the pre-order array. Now we need to know what is on the left and what is on the right. And we can't really tell that from the pre-order. All the pre-order tells us is this first element is a root. The in-order array, however, contains information about what is on the left and what is on the right of any given node, right? Because by definition, the node is in between its left and right subtrees. We can find any node and any nodes to the left of it are gonna be part of its left subtree and any nodes to the right of it are gonna be part of its right subtree. So the three is right here. By definition, these are gonna be the left subtree nodes and these are gonna be the right subtree nodes. Here we know the nine is on the left and we know the 15 and the 20 and the seven are over here, but hold on, which one is the right uh, subtree? This is just all the nodes in all of the right subtree to any level, but we need to know which node is actually there and how are we gonna find that out? So we're gonna have to cross-reference the in-order and pre-order arrays to figure this out. So looking at this three again, how many nodes are on the left of it? There is one node here on the left, okay? So 
its left nodes are going to follow it in the pre-order array. So I'll say that again. If the root node is the first element in the pre-order array, which in this case is three, the next element, if there is any left subchild, will be the left subchild, and its left subchild, and so on. So all the nodes descending from the left subtree under three will be immediately following it. In this case, there's only one, so we skip ahead one, and the next node tells us our root. So we know that the root here has to be 20, right? Because if, if there was only one element in the left tree, then we skip ahead one element, and that is the first element in the right subtree. So previously, the root was 3. And we said that everything to the left was a left subtree, and everything to the right was a right subtree. When we make a nested call, and 20 is our root, we know that everything to the left up until this point is a left subtree, and everything to the right up until the end is a right subtree. Why do we put this boundary here? The reason is, it's because we just branched off from the three. Everything from the three over has already been used on the left side of this divider. Okay, and so everything here is here. So we know that this is the 15 because it's on the left of the 20. We know that this is the seven. So what this is saying here is we're having a helper function and we're gonna have a root pre-index, which is the index at which the root exists in the pre-order array. We're gonna have an in start, which is where we start considering elements valid in the in order array and in end, which is where we stop considering elements valid in the in order array. And so we're calling this helper function with zero, zero, in order length minus one. And so what that's saying is the first root is gonna be the first element in the pre-order array. And we're gonna consider every element in the in order array valid. So what this means is we start out with this as the root. So that's index one, we're starting from index one here, just to make it simple. In start is gonna be one. In end is gonna be five. Root val is going to be three root in index is going to be two and our depth is going to be one so as of right now we know we have a three at the root of the tree and we're going to make a recursive call to generate the left subtree and so going from the three the left child is going to be the next element because it's a pre-order element array so it goes root and then all of the left subtree nodes, and then all of the right subtree nodes of that root. So root pre-index plus one will take us to this nine, which is the next. So root pre-index plus one is gonna be two. Root val is nine. We're at depth two. Root in index is gonna be one. In start, is going to get copied down because we're doing a left subtree, so the left bounds will not change. So that's in start. In end is going to be root in index minus one. So the previous root was three at index two. The only elements that are valid for its left subtree or to the left of it, we subtract one from the previous root in index and that gives us one, which is our right bound. So we know the left child of three is nine. Now we make another recursive call for depth three, because we want to find out what node is here. Root pre-index is going to be the previous root pre-index plus one, as we've been doing so far. That makes our root val 20. In start is going to remain one. 
in end is going to be the previous root in index minus one. So that's zero. Now one is greater than zero. So this is going to base case out. That means this is going to be null. So we need to handle this base case. And that's what's going to put the null here. So to recap, we're going to start at the root here. We're going to come down here and find the value at the root. We're going to find its index in the in order array. And then we're going to recursively go to the next root, which is the next element in the pre ordered array. And we're going to pass in the min and max bound for the elements in the in order array that are valid descendants of this node in this context of the tree. We're doing that by reassigning the right bound in the in order array to the element just to the left of where the root was. So this is going to recursively keep shooting down the left side of the tree until we reach a case where the uh, in start is greater than in end and we base case out with a null and we backtrack up. Then we're going to have to go and build the right side of the tree. And so if you recall in the building the intuition section of the video, the right side of the tree involved skipping ahead in the pre-ordered array by the number of elements in the left subtree. So let me explain this again. When we started at, let's explain this in our, in our diagram here. So when we started at the three here, we found it in the in order array. The left subtree was on the left. And then the number of those elements in this case was one, meaning we know that there's one element to the right of the three that is part of the left. Then the next element is a root, right? So we went three, nine, and then the next element is 20. So in order to get the left count, it's gonna be the index of the root element in the in ordered array minus the left bound or the in start plus one. So here if root in index, so here let's say the root element was three. It's root in, root in index is two. In start was one. Two minus one is one. That's how many elements we have to skip, right? So there's one element that we skip and then we're here, that's the next root element. But because our array actually was zero based, we need to plus one. So let's just say that this was zero based. Root in index would be one, in start would be zero. One minus zero is one, but that would put us at the nine. So we need to plus one to get to the 20. That's why it's root in index minus in start plus one. The plus one is because we're zero based or arrays are zero based in JavaScript and most languages. And then to build the right subtree, we're basically gonna say root pre-index plus the left count. That's our new root. So we're skipping all the left subtree that was already generated in the previous recursion calls. And we're getting to the right child of the root of the tree. And then the left bound is going to be updated to that index plus one. And the end bound is going to be the end of the array. We then build our root node with the left and right subtrees and return it. And that passes. So that's how you do the leak code 105 construct binary tree from pre-order and in order traversal. Thank you.